Hey guys, it's Ethan with Trackstar Motorworks. Today I'm going to be dyno tuning this LS7 Corvette using HP Tuner software. This is a car that came to me a while back and I already did some street tuning on the car. When the owner came in, he was complaining about drivability and especially like turning on AC was creating some stall conditions. Startup was not great. A lot of, lot of little drivability concerns, some bucking and surging. So we addressed all those on the street at the moment. Um, and now we just haven't got the chance to put it on the dyno. Um, so today we're going to get to do that and uh, see what the street tune kind of did to start with and where we end up after a little optimization using the dyno to, to get that, that extra power. Um, the motor is a really nice motor build on this, rare Morrison uh, built, and it's not just like a bunch of off the shelf parts. There's a custom spec cam and a few other goodies in there. The cam is a little bit less duration than your average, you know, just Texas speed stage four, whatever. Um, and the car has one and three quarters headers instead of one and seven eighths, which has kind of become the norm. Everybody's looking for that, the big, big power number. But uh, sometimes in that pursuit, you give up some drivability and you know mannerisms of the car. So this, this owner was looking to keep the car nicely drivable, make a bunch of extra power, but not give up anything in that process. Um, so we're gonna put it on the dyno, get some numbers and let's get to it. Um, as I mentioned, I've already street tuned this car, and it was about a year prior or something to the dyno session that we did the street tuning. He came up to me with somebody else's tune on the car. Um, he had it stalling with the AC on, stalling in general, poor drivability. We fixed that stuff, um, got all that squared away where he was happy with the drivability of the car. But at that time, I identified something really important and initially concerning. Um, but we saw that the car was getting a couple degrees of knock retard in the top end, specifically like above 5,000 RPMs. Um, a lot of times on a car with a built motor, long tubes, supercharger, anytime you're bolting on aftermarket parts, there is reason that the knock sensor sensitivity might need changed. However, this needs to be approached with extreme caution in tuning. If you don't know exactly what you're doing, you do not want to play with the knock sensor settings. Having said that, what I do here is try to go through and establish the real level at which the knock sensors need to be at. Um, I do that through a series of runs, first running as was and getting a couple degrees of KR, then removing timing until we don't get KR, and then moving timing even down below that and seeing if, hey, did we, did we actually drop in power? And that does happen. I remove timing below and then we drop in power, which tells me that's very likely false KR, false knock retard that we were experiencing. So I didn't want to do any of that on the street at the moment with this car. So I, I just thought that I needed to clarify moving forward in the video so that you guys know what I'm talking about and what my, what's going through my head as I'm addressing this. good looking run got got two degrees still of KR in the top end so missing a little bit of horsepower torque is where it it should be I think um, so need to need to adjust a little bit more and the uh, probably with the knock sensor sensitivity so on this run I've reduced the timing a bit uh, including particularly in the area on the dyno plot where we kind of had not not a down dip in power but a little a little uh, flat spot in power at 3,000 rpm so I'm going to see if that can fill that spot in and hopefully get no knock reading out on the big end now. Still had, still had our dip. 
still had the dip. All right. The, both numbers were higher, but like they weren't actually, they actually were lower. I did take out timing, but I got no, no, no KR reading on that run. Um, so I just wanted to see where, I wanted to see where the no KR mark was to feel comfortable about desensitizing any further, you know? Um, but so that's a bunch less timing in that area. I thought maybe it was overtimed in that spot, but that's not it. So I need to I need to poke a little further. All right, I wanted to point out right now on the uh, we we have we are having a not a not a dip. It doesn't actually lose power, but it it should be filled in here. So right now I'm trying to figure out why is it getting that dip. Um, on this last run, I played with the ignition timing a bit. I thought maybe it was overtimed in that area, even though it wasn't picking up any KR. Uh, we reduced the timing and the car, the, it didn't change there. The dip is still the same shape, even with a few less degrees timing in that area. Um, so it doesn't seem that the dip is because of timing. Um, now there could be a harmonic in the motor and the headers and the something that's gonna create a, um, but looking a little further, I can see that possibly it's from the way that the power enrich is coming on. Um, now this is a tune that I refined from another place to gain drivability and let the AC work and everything. The owner came to me a long while ago wanting drivability fixed. We did that and the car was never on the dyno. Um, so we did that refinement, but there was still some settings left in the tune that they were working, but you know, now that I'm on the dyno, I can see, okay, there's, there's room for optimization there. So the power and rich, not just the threshold where it comes on, but the enrichment rate had been doubled, um, which, you know, adding to the enrichment rate is fine. Definitely on a power adder car, blower, turbo, you're gonna wanna bump in some more enrich rate. But um, on an all motor setup, perhaps that was too much fuel too quickly. And I'm, I've, I've changed those settings a bit now and I'm hoping that we don't get that, that kind of lazy spot there in the graph. All right, so we got a very different power enrichment crossover. Hoping to see a change there at that 3,000 RPM mark. fill in there though um what where's our what do we got there 554 588 588 real real deal there yeah the real deal 588 real deal yeah So positive result in the area that I wasn't really focusing on right now. Um, and sometimes that's the way it goes where you have to kind of, you know, we looked at timing, we looked at fueling, neither one of those really seemed to affect it, honestly. Um, so maybe it is just a harmonic with the intake manifold and this particular motor size, intake combo, whatever the case. Um, but yeah, I mean, we had absolutely no KR reading out there in the big end um, and I think I need to add some timing back into that low end, perhaps, because um, it didn't seem like it. It didn't seem like it really cared either way. I want to analyze that a little bit more closely now. So I just wanted to show on screen right now. That's pretty much our street tune, and then two iterations of changes on the dyno now. So kind of kind of idea of what what to uh, what kind of changes or gains can happen on the dyno. Um, now I've made a significant amount of changes to what was already pretty good. Uh, probably should just do like one change, but uh, I saw quite a few things that I wanted to try here. And oftentimes I'm rewarded by doing that and I just get like better everywhere. Um, it could be worse everywhere though too. We'll see what happens.
558, oh, and 590, right? That's a new, that was the new run, okay. So we, we, looks like we did gain just a tiny bit everywhere there. I like it. Okay, so I wanna highlight a little further. That run was 558, 590. Um, so we've come up significantly from, I think this was our actually, even though it says run two, this was our like kind of baseline, 558. So look at the average though on that last run. I mean, our, our average torque went up by 18 foot pounds and our average horsepower went up by 16 horsepower. That's, that is a substantial difference from going from street to on dyno. Um, so pretty happy with that. I might have a little bit more to go, uh, but that's a good, that's a good gain from information that I couldn't really view on the street and now I can see and make the right changes for it. Didn't get any improvement, but we kind of verified our prior number there at what we did, like four less horsepower and four less foot pounds of torque. So um, good to see kind of the same pull again. Well, I think we are all done making horsepower with this car, um, but that's not all that goes into the tuning. You know, uh, to really enjoy that horsepower, you need to have a car that starts up correctly, idles correctly, doesn't stall out, has drivability, doesn't do some cam surgy weird stuff when you're in fifth and sixth gear at low RPM. Um, so those are all things that we kind of addressed on this car previously, uh, street tune. Like I said, the car was uh, already tuned when it came to me and the owner was complaining about drivability. So we fixed all that. Now we finally got on the dyno and proved the, the horsepower out. Um, so the final thing I'm doing right now is just optimizing just the startup. Um, so the car would start up and then kind of dip down and try to stall. It wouldn't actually stall, but it would try to stall. So I've adjusted a lot of parameters here and hopefully you're about to witness not, not just a good startup, but also when I'm gonna turn the AC on and there'll be a little change then, but hopefully it's, it's smooth. So here comes the startup. Nice. And here comes AC on. And really no change with the AC on. Um, I know that this car beforehand was one where when he would turn the AC on, the car would just like stall out right away. So obviously nobody wants to drive a car that's doing that. Um, I think we've got everything A1 now. We'll go hit the street and, and I'll have the owner drive and we'll check drivability even further. But I think this is a done deal. He should be happy with it and enjoy all the aspects of the car. All right, well, that is gonna complete the Z06 for the day. Final numbers at 590 torque and 555 or so horsepower. Um, was able to make pretty good gains over what we had on the street, which it felt, it felt pretty good on the street already. Um, more importantly, was able to completely refine the startup idle and all that. And hopefully we should have a, not only have all the power, but have a perfect running and driving car now as well. Um, that's it. If you liked it, if you learned anything, please hit that like, subscribe, share, and uh, see you next time.